Hey there. Well, today we're going to have a look at an absolute beast of a camera. This is the Reolink RLC 823S2 camera. This is a PTZ camera with a 16 times, yes, you heard me, 16 times optical zoom. This thing is crazy. So today, what we're going to do in this video, we're going to have a look at the device itself. We're going to have a look at the specifications. We're going to understand who this camera is for, who maybe it's not for, and give you a really in-depth view into what you can do with this device. So in addition to 16 times optical zoom, we've got 360 degree coverage in 4K ultra high definition. We've got auto tracking and color night vision. So the 360 degree pan means that you can go all the way around with a full circle. And then we have zero degrees to 90 degrees in the vertical tilt direction. It has smart patrol, which means that you can set it to patrol certain points of your surroundings and keep track of exactly what's going in all the areas. It's also got auto tracking, so it will automatically track any people, cars or pets that move through the zone. Daytime vision is fantastic with this camera, but we also have full color night vision as well as black and white vision at night. We've got instant alerts for people, vehicle and animal detection. It includes a sound alarm and it also has a mic and speaker allowing you to speak to anyone on the other side of the camera. This device is full plug and play. If you're connecting it via PoE to your NVR, it automatically connects. You can store your data either using an SD card of up to 256 gigs or using one of the Reolink NVRs up to 12 terabytes. So having a close look at the device, it's just amazing how large and how heavy this device is. And it just really sings out to the quality of the build of this camera. So over here, you can see we've got a really solid looking bracket with four screws that are gonna go through over there. We have our lead here, which has got your uh, PoE ethernet port, but we also have a power port in case you don't have ethernet. Then we've got this uh, rubbery sort of felt here that's gonna give you a really nice connection up against whatever you're mounting this to. Now, this can be mounted either horizontally or to a vertical surface. And the way you change that is you actually undo this little screw over here, and then you can change the performance of this mount over here. It's a steel or an aluminum mount. Over on the front there, you can see we've got our rear link branding. The first thing that I noticed with this camera when I picked it up was the smooth movement of this panning motor over here. It's just incredible. Similarly, we've got the vertical zooming or this vertical adjustment. Once again, really smooth movement. If we have a look at that lens there, it's just massive. This is our 16 type zoom optical lens and it has autofocus built in there as well. Then we've got uh, some spotlights up at the top there. We've got some infrared inside here as well. We've got our microphone on the front here. We've got a speaker on the back side over there, as well as our SD card uh, slot to just remove the little waterproof case over there. But yeah, once again, I'm just simply, just simply blown away by the size, quality, and just the feel of the build of this camera. Along with the camera, we also get a power supply which can be used if you're not using PoE. We've got a set of screws and wall plugs. Um, we've got this little security connection just in case it falls while you're installing it, I'm thinking. And we've also got a ethernet cable included in the pack. Once you've plugged it in, the camera starts doing this little rotation thing and just preparing its orientation, getting ready to start up then it goes back again and it tilts itself up and down. The picture quality on this camera is just fantastic. Having a look at our stream rate here, we've got a picture resolution of 
3840 by 2160 with a maximum bit rate of 8192. We've got a frame rate of up to 25. Having a look at the PTZ functionality, this is where the camera really starts excelling. If we start zooming in, look at this, just unbelievable. Look at how we're zooming in on that number plate over there. We'll just reposition a little bit and zoom in even more. Look at that. Just amazing. The quality of this zoom is just incredible. We'll just adjust that a little bit and you can see there. Look at how clear that number plate is. Just amazing, isn't it? So let's have a look at our night vision mode. Now you can see currently we're in the infrared system so we've got the black and white images if we switch on the spotlight over here you'll see that we switch over to the color night vision mode now i do have a little bit of a problem where it's trying to focus and it seems to be struggling to focus a little bit more at night but it does eventually get there now i've just noticed over here that you can actually select to a manual focus mode here if you want to but it's quite tricky with the manual focus to try and get it to the perfect focus. Anyway, let's zoom in on our Range Rover over here and see if we can read the same writing on the back of the Range Rover like we did in the day mode. So there we go. We're zooming in nicely. Um, yeah, it's doing that focus thing again. Give it a chance there. All right, so we can read. Oh, it went past. Give it a time. There we go. So we can read our Range Rover and our Sport, but there seems to be some reflection going there. We can just read that number plate. Now, if we now back it out again, back to our zoomed out mode, there we can see it zooms out reasonably fast, and we're back to our mode over there. We turn off our color mode. We go back into our infrared light mode. So as with all Reolink cameras, we've got this amazing integration into Home Assistant. Now, for some reason, it has doubled up each of the entities. We have a live one and a non-live one. Not quite sure why this has happened, probably with me fiddling around, but it's still working great. So as you can see, we've got control over the floodlight. We can manually focus. We can select it into the guard mode. We can control the PTZ in all directions. We can turn on and off the siren. We have our zoom control over here. We've got um, a couple more disabled entities over there. We've got our animal detection. We've got our actual live view. So if we open up there, we can see that we've got our live view here in the night view. Uh, we've got motion and person and vehicle detection. We've got some more entities over here looking at snapshots and if we scroll down a bit more we can actually adjust the individual animal person and ai vehicle sensitivity we can switch the autofocus on we can auto track disappear timeline not sure what that is we can also scroll down here we can select which mode the actual camera is in color night or black and white we can control the email events uh, we can select the floodlight mode. We like to keep it in auto. We can adjust the actual floodlight brightness. This is a new one. Haven't seen that on this integration before. We can set it to return to the guard point in a certain amount of time. We can go and turn on the ringtone on the hub if we want to. We've got motion sensitivity update. We can actually calibrate our PTZ. Uh, we've got push notifications, we can record as well as the audio, we can control the siren, we've got volume, we've got another whole 24 different items that can be enabled over here and we can see what day night mode we're in as well as our PTZ pan position. So once again, just a huge amount of entities being brought into Home Assistant that you can control this camera with. Another cool thing over here, you can see I've got the automations and I can click this. This is a Bluetooth. Um, this is a, over here we've got automations that we can actually trigger 
from this device so we could trigger when the spotlight goes on it is even a blueprint here that i've downloaded before the snapshot blueprint so send a camera snapshot when motion is detected i can say which motion sensor do i want i can select the entity that it's going to pull it from and the device to notify and i've even got a delay that i can set and the actual message so these are just amazing features within Home Assistant. When it comes to the motion detection, we have a huge amount of control. We can first of all detect or select which type of object we want to detect, person, vehicle or animal. We can go and we can adjust the actual range that it's detecting within. We can obviously set up a schedule for time. We can even go into the tracking and actually set the amount of time that the object stops or disappears and actually adjust the tracking there. We've got this motion beta. If we turn that on, you'll see that it's detecting those cars over there. So I'm very interested to see what the future of this detection is within the rear link cameras. We can go in there, we can adjust our different, um, oh, there's our smart detection sensitivity that can be adjusted. We can also do an object size. So we can select exactly how large or small a person, vehicle, and animal needs to be to be detected as well as setting no detection nut zones. So overall, I am blown away by this camera. I think this is really awesome, specifically if you're looking to be able to target certain areas within your property and being able to focus in on those areas with that huge optical zoom. Other types of options, if you're looking for something that's going to give you a wide view, then you would want to go for one of Realink's dual lens cameras. But certainly if you're looking for a POE camera with a huge amount of zoom resolution and a great control within Home Assistant, you saw the number of entities that are getting exposed into Home Assistant and also just how well this device has been manufactured then i can ominously give my big thumbs up for this device the only thing i'm hoping is that over time the software is going to be improved slightly around that autofocus in the night vision but anyway that's all for now if you've enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and tell me what your favorite security camera is that's all for now bye then